everybody and welcome to another exciting fantastic marvelous edition of words images and worlds i am joined this evening by tim Smythe. tim welcome to the show that's you that's you that's me. thanks for having me jason yeah my pleasure you are literally for people listening to the audio version they won't know what i'm talking about but you appear to be just surrounded by comics and graphic novels this just looks like a good place to be yeah, this is one of the libraries in the house and my classroom's even worse. So gotcha, gotcha. I see we have the mighty Thor back there. We have Sam Wilson, Captain America. Just I was just rereading a little bit of his introduction in 2015 as Captain America. Actually. So good. Yeah, tackling yeah. immigration and racism. I mean, comics have always been political. It's just it's so I yeah, I bring him into my classroom. I'm like, hey, guess what we're talking about this week? Let's talk about immigration because, you know, Captain America. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, yeah, just just the beats in that book alone could be a lesson plan. Now, remind me, I, I've got like the, the set questions here, but um, you are a reading specialist. So I'm a high school social studies teacher, um, oh, okay. But, I'm, okay. but I'm also a reading specialist. I'm a weird, I've never met another one like me. Um, usually yeah. reading specialists are like elementary school and tend to be maybe a language arts teacher, but I really feel that we're all teachers of, of reading and writing. So that's why I went back to school for that. 100%, 100%. Now, I was a middle grades teacher. I went back and did the whole like middle grades thing, just in case I ever wanted to teach anything else. I, I did English. I've done the college level thing. I've done online teaching. Uh, it's just, it's cool to try different stuff. It feels like mm -hmm. right now I'm a high school English teacher. Um, so very cool that that you're integrating comics with history, social studies, and you have the reading specialist to add to. Uh, I love that combination, that multiple threat. You also have a book that's just been released by Rutledge and the full title, I'll, I'll call it Teaching with Comics, but I've been through, uh, usually when I propose a book to Rutledge, uh, it's something colloquial and I'm like, I, I don't know, I try to come up with catchy titles and then they're like, no, just tell the people what's in the box. So the full that's title right. is Teaching with comics and graphic novels, fun and engaging strategies to improve close reading and critical thinking in every classroom. Yeah, that's the title. <laughs> yeah, love it. Uh, labor of love. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, it, it's well done. It's well put together. And I love how you tackle so many different areas with comics. Uh, the memoir comic being one of those that speaks to my heart. And I love that you showcase so many creators. I think Jarrett Lerner is the first one that gets kind of a nod and image shout out there. Yeah, I, I love that. That was actually the hardest part of my book was getting um, permissions, copyright permissions. And so there are no there's no there's a couple of Marvel things in here, but nothing really because I couldn't get permissions. I couldn't get through to Marvel. Um, but like DC was very kind to me and others. So. I mean, it gets to the point where you could write like this giant book and you have to decide what goes in and what doesn't. Um, but I love presenting with the people that I that I know. Like I, you know, I bring I feel like I bring Andrew Iden and Nate Powell and, and Jarrett Lerner and all these guys and Laurie Hulse Anderson with me when I present because I'm, I'm talking about all these people whose work I really love. And so it was actually kind of really an honor to put them in my book, too. Yeah, I love that idea of um, going into the classroom and it's not just you, you have the people there along with you, which is great because I can only talk so much through my experience and I can only speak to so many things. But when you're aligning yourself with almost imagining sort of the row of authors, you know, Avengers assemble that kind of moment. Yeah, <laughs> well said. Yeah. Um. So what was it about comics I have a rather long question here, actually, to start out uh, about teaching literacy in comics. What was it about linking all of those things that got you intrigued initially? Um, well, I mean, I was a lifelong comics reader, like, you know, uh, like lots of folks. Um, but, I, you know, I grew up in Philadelphia and uh, the two things I loved were hip hop and comics. Um, so, you know, we could talk about NWA and Public Enemy and that was all cool. Um, but you weren't really supposed to talk about comics when when we were younger. Um, mm -hmm. You know, that would have gotten you uh, bullied, let's just say that. Yeah. Um, but I love that my own kids, my students and my own three children 
like to be a nerd today is a whole different thing. It's something that they're proud of. Right. Um, so I'm really thankful for that. So, so I had that background and I had a really rough childhood and, you know, it was this idea of, you know, like the X-Men of the, all these outsiders who could find some place to go where they could be accepted um, or, you know, um, you can get into Batman or Spider-Man, these people who had really rough childhoods and didn't give up, they found a way to still want to make the world a better place. And so those are the stories that I grew up with and always inspired me to not give up and those sorts of things. Um, and then I had my son. Um, he's really the reason why I went back to school to be a reading specialist. Um, short story, my son has this rare form of meningitis. So he has a lot of um, he, he's I, I, neurodivergent, which I've come to learn the term through my son. Um, this idea that he has severe migraines, nerve pain, extreme fatigue, all these things that he struggles with. And when he was in kindergarten, um, he got in trouble at school um, because he didn't want to read these these Bob board books, these really god awful, boring books that his teacher had. And he loved comic books. And so I was trying to do the right thing. And so my wife and I, we took away his superhero lunchbox and his T-shirts because his teacher said comics were ruining um, him learning how to read properly. Mm. Until I was like, what the hell am I doing here? This kid wants to read comic books. And so um, it really started me down that path. And so then I, you know, I went back to school. We pulled him from that school. Um, and he now he's a ninth grade. He loves to read everything. In fact, people send him books to write reviews on. And, you know, really, uh, he's going to school next year for graphic design, like all these great things. Um, he's my own personal hero. But, you know, I saw that it was comic books that gave him this kid already had every reason not to want to go to school. Um mm -hmm. But he learned how to read through comics, the build in scaffolding, the be, you know, the rereading, the multimodality, all and the high interest, all those things that, you know, you and I know about. Um, and so I went back to school to be that to be a reading specialist. Uh, and I was the only male in the entire program. Um, and I was the only non elementary school uh, teacher in, in the program. In fact, my professors didn't know what to do with me. They didn't have books on teaching high school teachers about literacy. And I really, like we were, I was saying to you earlier, like I very much believe strongly that we're all teachers of reading and writing. Um, I, and I teach, I've taught courses through the University of Pennsylvania and still we need to teach our college students how to read and write analytically too. Um, so my, I started talking with my professors and, and the students uh, there and the other teachers and they kept giving us this data that boys didn't like to read. Uh, okay, okay. And they were all, you know, you know, first graders, and, and I'm thinking of my son here, and I'm like, well, what are you giving him to read? And I said, uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Well, I don't kind of like to read a lot of that stuff either. Did you ever think about using comic books? And it wasn't that they were rude or what, they, they didn't have a background in comics. And so, you know, this was 2006, where it was really a much more of an uphill battle, um, where I think now there's a lot more acceptance with using comics in the classroom. But my professors, um, all female too, um, love the idea. And they were like, go, go for it. And so I wound up writing uh, a master's thesis paper um, on using comics and pop culture in the classroom. Um, and I'll end with this because I, I could talk about this topic a, a lot. But um, my curriculum supervisor, when I first kind of posited the idea of using graphic novels in my classroom, she said she she again, she wasn't poo pooing the idea. She didn't have a background in comics and didn't understand their use. And she said, well, do you have any research on the efficacy of graphic novels in the classroom? So first I had to look up what the word efficacy meant. Um, and then once I understood <laughs> what she was saying, um, I said, well, yes, yes, I do. Here's my master's paper. Um, and then not too much longer after that, um, I published my first article with PBS. And once that happened, um, my school district kind of was like, okay, well, well, let's go with that then. So, <laughs> yeah. Nice. You get you got the PBS cred. Yeah, that helps a lot. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that helps a lot. That that's cool. And thanks for sharing that about your son and your family. Um, I've been impressed by how many people I've talked to that within the comics world grew up and say, "I learned to read through comics," mm -hmm. and I think it gets so often overlooked. I think I think people, as you said, they don't have a background, and so they just have this kind of one dimensional idea of it. And, you know, and it's not the thing that grabs every kid, but I, I don't know what the thing is that grabs every kid. So it's right. just great to have that arsenal of a range of texts and you speak so well to comics. You also have the Edutopia article uh, that just came out not too long ago, right? 
Um, it actually is. They're they're awesome there. Um, you know, they go. Mm, through they really multiple are multiple times. Um, and so it is pushed through the pipeline now. So it should be out fairly soon. Okay. All right. We'll we'll have to share it around when it's out and in the world. But yeah, they they publish really really good things as well. Um. So as a personal reader, somebody that's been reading comics, I've been reading comics since I was seven. Do you have comfort comics that you return to in your personal reading life that nourish and enrich you? I, you know, this is why um, I have, I, the, I have the digital apps, but it's why I still buy comics. Um, and I buy the weekly comics, not just to collect the trade paperback comics. Um, there is, and people laugh all the time, but if you know, you know when you open up a comic from when you were a kid and you just smell it. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. Oh, um, yeah. yeah. There are, there are times where I just go down in the basement and I'm having a rough time and I'll pop open a Guinness and, you know, put on some music and I'll just read through some of my old transformers and GI Joe's and Spider-Man. And, you know, it's just, I don't have one in particular um, kind of a story, but when you would ask me that question, I really thought about, what it is and and i'd have to say if i had to pick one book um and it's not a comfort comic in, in that sense yeah, it's, yeah i've taught the march graphic novels all three of them and run um for years now and they are very much the most powerful teaching tool i've ever used and if you don't know um this tells powerfully the story of congressman john lewis during the civil rights movement and it is filled with such hope for the future with such love and forgiveness from this man and yet such violence and hatred and but it makes history accessible and like andrew iden the, the co-writer always says you know it's not just um martin luther king jr it's not just rosa parks it's not just i have a dream it's so much more and when you know that young people were very much involved in the civil rights movement um i have kids who read these books who have told me in 10th and 11th grade they've never read a book all the way through before in their life and they can't wait to come to class to read this. And so by the time we get to the second and third books, I don't even have to hand out like a guided reading packet. I hand out my books and sticky notes and I tell the kids put in sticky notes, wherever you feel moved and put an exclamation point, a question mark, a reaction. And when they hand the books back in they're they're huge because they're so filled with sticky notes and they have these, it's not me leading the conversations. And so like, um, I'm trying to see. Oh, yeah. So like Nate Powell, who's the artist, he's a save it for later. I highly yeah. recommend. Um, Absolutely. His artwork. It's like it's weird. It's like it's coming home. Like I, I recognize his artwork and it just I, I know where he's going. I have all of his books. I have all of his work. Um, and that's what I love about the visual medium is, you know, if you read a prose book, that's great. But you don't you don't fall in love with those seeing those letters you you might fall in love with the meaning but i Mm -hmm. i can open up and if you didn't tell me that this was a book by nate powell you know i i would open up and i could tell you oh i know exactly who drew that and that's what makes visual literacy so powerful down to the down to the word bubble two bucks down to that 2015 and that one the scene that always gets me in that book is where he goes to the grocery store because that's just such a it's this normal everyday routine thing, but man, if I don't walk into a grocery store every now and then and go, ah, it wasn't that long ago that I was in here and there were like arrows on the floor and masks and it, you're absolutely right. It packs so much in the visual literacies there. Uh, and then the commentary is there. Yeah. You know, they're not just superhero books. Not that there's anything wrong with superhero books exactly. because those are great too. Yeah. I kind of cringe when, when, you know, people do, presentations and things and you see pow bam and, and that's great and you know it, it's kitsch and it's you know it's 60s batman and yes there's that mm-hmm. too but um the i always say like go to a comic book store if you haven't been to a comic book store in 20 years go it's so much different now there literally is a comic for everything but even the capes and type stories like we were just talking about with captain america they're talking mm-hmm. about immigration. They're talking about anxiety. They're talking about like all these deep and meaningful conversations. And so we need to move past that idea that it's just like punching somebody in the face. You know, yeah, there's there's that fun part of it too, um, but there's so much more. Yeah, and I'm just looking at your um, surroundings here with Flamer, the Jungle, uh, Star. Is that Stargazing back there? I think maybe yep, White yep. Bird, Guts. Oh, uh, oh yeah unflattening uh to kill a mockingbird 
can't stay. I mean, there's so, so many. And uh, again, uh, you and I live that life every day of working with readers in a high school classroom and doing the the work of connecting kids with what it means to be a reader, regardless of, of the content area. It's about being a reader and getting the opportunity to engage with something where you can see yourself, you can learn something. I mean, there's just nothing like it. Yeah. And all levels. Like I don't, my books aren't by Lexile. They're not organized by reading level and grade level. If a senior wants to read a picture book, you know, and get something meaningful out of that, great. If a third grader wants to read a high school level book and try to get something out of that, great. You know, we need to kind of move past that idea too. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Um, shattering the levels for sure. Yeah. Shattering yep. the levels. Yeah. So um, I know I mentioned the book. Anything else that you want to throw out about the process of writing the book, the material that's in the book, uh, anything else that you want to make sure that you mention about that? So I don't I don't even know what to call it. it it's part lesson plans. It's part uh, personal memoir um, mm -hmm. about my family and my son, about my journey in comics. Um, but then there's also just the idea was, you know, it's not a it's not an edu speak kind of a book. Um, I don't use big you know jargon and things like that. It was meant to be an accessible book uh, where people can say, oh, you know what, I'm going to try this out in my classroom, like literally tomorrow, kind of an idea. Um, my first original comic is in there. Ryan Dunleavy, who writes Action Presidents with uh, Fred Van Lente. It was really neat to watch my script come alive in his images and. I realized just how much work an artist does in taking those words yeah, right, and translating it into those visuals. And he took, you know, four pages of script and in one page in just a few panels, it's all there. Um, and I think even on a deeper level um, than the pro. So, yeah, so there's all kinds of stuff in there. Um, and, and I love that I was doing a thing with um, Andrew Iden and, and Laura Hall Sanderson um, at the National Social Studies Conference. Uh, we were uh, doing a panel together. And I said something about my book and Laurie corrected me. She said, well, that, that's your first book. Um, and so there, there's more to come. But I wrote it when it was during COVID. I wrote it when I was a stay at home dad because my son, who's immune compromised, had to stay home. And so when kids went back in person before the vaccines, he had to stay home. Um, and we moved we <laughs> moved houses in the middle of all this. My father-in-law came in to move with us because he has dementia now and I, like I, I say this and, and I don't, I, I'm not trivializing it. It was like, I have to get past the trauma of writing that book and all the things that we went through when the world changed. And so I'm starting to get that energy back, um, particularly when you see people share images, like it's, it's never going to get old when they share on Twitter, like, Hey, I got your book today. Oh, yeah, um, it's, yeah. it's such a surreal feeling. It really is. Um, and what a great way to write, to process through um, to write about something that you love. Um, yeah. And, and may it be the first of many. May it be the first of many. Thank you. I hope so. <laughs> um, the One of the things in the book that you do that I think is so key too for educators to think about, you know, one of the arguments that people might bring is, well, I, I have to teach the standards. I have to teach the standards. And you really articulate really well at the get go. Here are the standards. Here's how they connect. And, and I honestly have to say, during the pandemic, I was also visiting comics and doing things to try to, like, you know, go day to day in, in the 11 to 10th of some time you wary or whenever it was, you know, time lost all meaning. And I kind of had this epiphany as I was trying to teach online that, like, I, I don't think there is a standard that you can't teach through comics. Yes. I mean, literature, history, science... Uh, there's science comics, there's history comics, there are all of these things, and then there are just comics that connect. So um, I would absolutely say the book is affordable, and it's a great resource, and absolutely worth checking out and pulling in to help frame some of that up. Thank you. Yeah, um, you know the Common Core. There's I whenever I do presentations, I include the one. It's like CC dot you know whatever one point five four whatever it is, but mm. literally <laughs> says literally says graphic novels um, in the standards. And so I always say, <laughs> you can tell your administrator like, listen, if we're not using graphic novels, we're actually not following Common Core. So that's right. Yeah, you know, that's right. Yeah, and I, I've written you know teacher guides for uh, Laura Hell Sanderson's speak, and it's all tied to 
Common Core. I just wrote, and I um, one of the questions later was about books, but um, mm-hmm. Jared Krasowska's uh, Sunshine just came out. Yes, um, today. My wife, today. Yes. Or my yesterday. Wife, it, yesterday, yes, because I brought up my classroom today. Um, but my wife and I wrote the teacher guides for both Hey Kiddo and Sunshine. Um, so uh, Scholastic will be putting that, that out for teachers. It's all, again, tied to Common Core and everything else. And so, you know, I love that publishers are on board not just with publishing these amazing books, but they also understand, particularly uh, graphics and scholastic, that educational piece of all that. It's fantastic to see. What a what a benefit to teachers to get a book and to have resources because teachers are busy people. Uh, <laughs> okay. I mean, you and I both come home at the end of the day and do extra things too. And teachers teachers are busy people. Everybody does a lot in the world of education. I don't think people realize sometimes, um, but yeah, absolutely. So the more resources there are, the better. And uh, thank you for putting that out into the world as well. Yeah, I love doing it. So yeah. So we had um, Sunshine. I know I, the other thing I see about you on social media, and we'll have to make sure that we list your upcoming conferences, web spaces and all of that so that people can check out what you're doing. But um, one of the things that I love is that you're a book ambassador. I try to do that too and share books around when I get them. Uh, Any titles, we got Sunshine, but any other titles that are currently out, just out or upcoming that you want to give a quick shout out to? So I just, well, um, School Trip from Jerry Craft. Um, Love it. Yep. Yeah, so that was kind of a heart. Yep, there it is. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you can see that teacher, right? Like, yeah, I put all the sticky notes in the book um, of, oh, okay, I can use that. Oh, yeah, I can use that. Um, it'd be nice to not be a teacher and just read a book and not like think about the 80 ways you can use it in your classroom. <laughs> you can't not, right? <laughs> but um, yeah, we were watching uh, the Disney Plus show um, of um, Crossover. Um, yes. And so Jerry Craft has a cameo in episode six. He's in the stands. Um, and so my son, who, again, so we call Jerry, we call him Uncle Jerry. Jerry has done so much for my son. Um, it's it's unbelievable. Uh, he's he's one of the nicest people I've ever met. Um, and so when we see his work and, you know, we know that there's a movie in the works and uh, his new kid is the first one to win the Newbery Award and um, just so many fantastic things. So, so yeah, absolutely school trip. Um, mm, but I, mm-hmm. Also, like the people that you meet. And this is. Um, so it's called um, I Am a Superhero Expert uh, from Josh Steele. Um, so I met the Steele brothers and they're on TikTok and Facebook. There's, there's these two young boys. Uh, his brother is autistic. And so as we celebrate Autistic Awareness Month, Autistic Celebration Month, it's a prose book, but it's all about using. And I know this from having autistic kids myself um, in my classroom all the time. They tend to, to include those kids in my classroom because of the comics. And we there's all this research that we know in autism with facial recognition and emotions and all those things that our kids do. You know, and, and this his Josh's brother has an encyclopedic knowledge of superheroes and comics and brilliant, right? And um, so he wrote this book about he and his brother and their journey. So I had the the honor, uh, they have a really great mom who is also like their business manager. And she reached out to me on, on Facebook. And then I've had the honor to meet them. And now they go to schools and they talk to kids about acceptance and love and using autism as a superpower. Um, and so again, it's called, I am a superhero expert, Josh Steele, S-T-E-H-L-E. It's just such an awesome story. It really is. Um, and then the only other one, it's not new, but oh, I started, um, I don't know if you've ever read the Milestone comics. Um, yeah, it's not, not that uh, dense of one, but yeah, I've read the like, some of the issues. Yeah, they're all, they're so, it's like Static Shock and all those guys are just re-released. So they mm-hmm. put them together. This is book two, all, all together. And so I just finished book one and now I'm getting the book two. Um, and it's just such a cool thing to go back and relive all those old comics. Well, I shouldn't say old, um, but you know what I mean? <laughs> Classic, yeah. There you go. Classic, Classic. Yeah. Classic. Yeah. Classic. We also have, I think we have a mutual acquaintance in Jarrett Lerner, yeah. and um, yeah, the the title just left me, but the book that he's got, I'm going to have to look it up, but the book that he's got where he's using poetry, verse novel, alongside comics, 
and visual so, ah, work in progress. Work Thank in you. Progress. I have and progress it, in my head. Yeah. And it's about, um, he struggled with uh, eating disorder. Um, so it's a very open, very emotional uh, type of a story, which Jarrett tends to do. Um, and we just actually were at one of his talks. He came down here in, in Doylestown um, just last week, and he was talking about the book and everything. And he, he talked to a lot of the kids. Um, it, it is probably bar none the best website, uh, jarrettlearner.com. He has lots of free comics and activities, and I use them in my own high school classroom. He has things like finish this comic. And so when we have like the state test and stuff and the kids are so fried and I give it to them and they make their own comics with his prompts and they love it and they laugh and they're, you know, and, and they get to be kids and things like that. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm, so that comes out, I think, in, a, in about a month. Um, and I really can't wait to, to read and share that book um, very much so. Um, and then there's also this other book that comes out on May 10th um, that I pre-ordered. Yeah. That I'm looking forward to reading. Uh... Oh, right. so your book. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, thanks. Thanks for yeah. the shout out. Yeah. Increasing visual literacy and critical thinking skills through graphic novels. Like, boom, there it is. Memorable uh, title. Very memorable. Yeah. The titles are tough, like you said. Yeah. Um, there's a great Gatsby uh, adaptation coming out in June. Uh, Stamped. Oh, there's a, a graphic novel version of Stamped coming out June 6th from Joel uh, Christian Gill, who's amazing. Um, trying to think what else is... I mean, there's lots of different things that are coming out, but yeah, it's, it's when I go to my tax person that, you know, and I say, well, here's all the money I spent on books this year, um, which is, you know, it's a shame as a teacher, I can't write those expenses off, right? You get like a $300 deduction, but as a small <laughs> business owner and a consultant, I can write them off. It's, it's so not fair and it's infuriating. We, we need to petition for some some changes in tax benefits yeah. for teachers that are spending materials okay. for the classroom by all means. Agreed. Agreed. Which is every teacher, just in case listeners don't know, every teacher goes and spends money on stuff for the classroom. Yeah. So, <laughs> yep. yeah. Speaking as somebody that's married to a teacher. Uh, absolutely. Yep. Same. I mean, $300, that, that's gone in the first week of school. Like that's, <laughs> Yeah. I think we're coming to the end of our scheduled time, but I hope to connect with you another time. And I also want to make sure that we give folks some notes about upcoming conference. You and I talked a little bit about this in, in the pre-recording show, but uh, upcoming conference venues. I, I know that you speak at in-services. If anybody out there wants a talented individual, an author that is able to talk to comics, absolutely, uh, as well as other things. And so anything that you'd like to share with listeners about that or viewers? Yeah, no, I mean, it's it's funny because, I, you know, I, I, I've i been a published author in lots of different ways with blogs and blogs and reviews and online articles. But one of the reasons why I wrote my book was it still has that that weight to it. Now you're a real author. And I wish we can move past that. But now that my book has been published now, you know, people fly me out to do keynote um, type things and uh, school districts hire me to come out and do uh, in services and they'll buy like 50 copies of my book and you know all these great wonderful things um, so I always say to teachers like for your students too but we need to move past this idea of traditional publishing um, and know that we're all authors in a lot of different ways but also the idea of you know I'm just a teacher um, but we all are. And so we need to help control and, and shape the conversation about education in our country. Great. So we do need voices. So reach out to your unions magazine, reach out to whomever it may be and write articles about the awesome things going in, in your classroom. Um, so yeah, I have some, you know, like local things, school district and services and, and uh, small comic cons and things like that. Um, but I did put in for the first time for my kids and I to present, and my wife, I was able to finally get her to do a panel with me uh, at San Diego Comic-Con. Um, now, whether that gets approved or not, I don't know, um, but man, that would be super awesome um, because I do what I do because of my kids. Um, and I also submitted my book for an Eisner Award. Um, and, and, I, and I say that because, you know, I'm surprisingly very introverted and, and, you know, filled like a lot of teachers with a lot of self-doubt and things like that. But I very much learned in the last year and a half or so that these opportunities, particularly as a teacher, don't come by if you don't put it out there. And so, hey, if my panel doesn't get accepted, if my book doesn't get nominated, 
I tried, right? And that's that's the best that we can do. Um, and so I, I, you know, I'm 48 years old. I feel like I'm just getting started in life. Um, and I don't want to have any regrets. So, and, and if if anything gets rejected, send it again. You know, exactly. Right. Like my first, I don't know, two or three panel or uh, conference presentations got rejected. And uh, you know, sometimes in academia, people can be really mean too. So the comments are not always the <laughs> nicest thing. But I really looked past that and listened to the the good comments. So, yeah. I, Good on you for knocking on those doors, and I, I hope you get the Eisner, and uh, yeah, absolutely. Good message, and good message of advocacy for teachers as well. Yeah, and 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 for my kids, too. When I mean kids, I mean my biological children, but also for my students, too. That idea of put yourself out there, and people really do care what you think and what you're yeah. doing, particularly in our classrooms. Like, the people, like, it's so funny to, to work with, like, a really big name author, and, you know, ah, nah, nah. but then when they hear that their work's being used in a classroom, that that's what impresses them. Um, and it makes them feel worthwhile and that, that their work is being used uh, with with our kids. Every author smiles when they hear, oh, I, I shared this with a student. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you for a, a wonderful conversation. Did I miss anything that you wanted to make sure to, to share? Oh, we, we could go for five more hours. But no, I, I think. Could. <laughs> that's the basics i really appreciate it jason it was it was a nice conversation yeah as i said we've been connected for some time so great to meet in not person but whatever this zoom box is um, yeah and hope to talk again soon agree thanks so much